Freitas dafür stark. When I came here, it was uh, definitely not uh, to run away from anything. It was to experience new things. And I thought, that, that would be good for a year. So that is Upper China, Chinatown. Yeah, maybe it's because they were digging so deep and say, are you digging all the way down to China? In this area, we fi you find uh, quite a lot of the cultural midden if you dig down here. It has no historical value. It was just bones uh, from, from whales and smoking pipes from, from 1800s, 1700s. This plant uh, that we have here is a kvon, and it, it's uh, very rich in uh, vitamins. It was eaten and brought, uh, brought along for, it's, uh, it's not delicate, so to say, but it's, uh, if the choice is, uh, getting sick. It's called Angelica. Angelica, Angelica. I bought this house in 75. Down here is a, is a room. That room is actually a, an entire house that where, where six grown-up people uh, lived. Must be an old house, or maybe especially poor, because it has no uh, basement. But this has been uh, a simply dirt floor, clay on the floor. You see, there's, uh, it's not a square. This is a little thing going into our present house. What they say is that it was maybe a little shed for one cow to the family next door, just half a meter away. That's how it was in 65. And uh, the yellow houses are still here, but these houses have been uh, taken away or rebuilt, the gray houses. And uh, we are here. I didn't know the society, but when I came here, it was kind of revelation. It had kind of everything. It's a small nation full of people from many places, actually, much more international than you think from outside. So I didn't stay only one year. I, I, I've been here 40 years now. <laughs> when I moved here. My job as a teacher includes making school bands. 
the first day I come to the school, I, I put up a, a poster, who wants to play folk, who wants to play jazz. And the folk band was immediately working because there were some musicians in the school. And so, tick, 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 we had a band. everywhere with boat up to the 60s. It's, the road system came late. It was different because I, I used to have a piano with me. Well, I always had a piano with me, a little smaller than this, in the car. And this car, when we go to Suroy Sandoy with the piano in it, had to get on the boat and off the boat. But so what? That was... Uh, advanced technology compared to the 50s. <laughs> of course, you, you can romanticize on, on the old days and say that the life was maybe more family-like. On the other hand, uh, I doubt that the villages would have survived. It is still a struggle, but have survived without uh, more connection. In the 70s, I think, and 60s, they worked uh, very hard on making it possible to live at all the places. And it's not finished. The first tunnels, of course, there were just one track, and they, they are still there in, in Suroy and in, in the north. And nowadays, they, they, are, they seem very small. But it must have meant this difference that you could drive in an hour or half an hour instead of having to sail and you were not always certain to be able to sail because of the weather conditions. So that, that was a continuous change, I think, from the Second World War time. Hvis vi går 100 år tilbake, eller 120, 30, 40 år tilbake, 
så blev det sån en, en nationalitetsväckelse på Färöarna alltså som man, man kan säga att industrirevolution på en mått som har utvecklat sig upp genom hela 1900-talet och blev extra stark efter andra världskrig och då, då det kommer upp i 60 år med det blir stor framgång i ekonomisk det är nog med vår nationalitetsfullelse i That was a change in the 60s, that there came these big trawlers not needing many people. But it needs a lot of people on land. And the fish factories that grew up, those villages that had and still have, some of them, uh, well-working factories, they can support a whole society of two, three, four hundred people. about our country, Faroe Island, it's, it's a fishery nation. Yeah. And we have, a very, we have a big fleet in the North Atlantic, just like the big uh, Russia, they also have a lot of ships, up in Murmansk and so on. And uh, one of the first countries we were doing fishery game agreements with, that was with the older, old Soviet Union, back in 1977. And as I am aware, we were the first country who were doing a fishery agreement with the Soviet Union. It was a totally different time, totally different political systems, and more yeah, left-wing uh, politics. And uh, um, I was not in politics, of course, at that time, so I can not tell from, from the period. But it was a time where you had um, not that strong um, tools to uh, regulate the democracy. The politicians were deciding actually everything, uh, more also down to the levels of treating fishery rights and all these licenses and so on. Atle Dam was a great part of the social democrat uh, uh, kind of society of the Nordic countries. I think he was a real idealist. <laughs> and he was also one of the forces that had uh, fish factories laid out in the country and, and not only in, in one or two major villages. So actually it may have been too optimistic. There's sker to know thing som 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 had a stor betydning for färden. Man 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 overtook flere områder fra Danmark og man man utviklede samfundet på mange måter altså. Det var en opgangstid helt fra den tid og helt op til sidst i 80'erne, da den her krise kom med, at det var, det var faktisk blevet for mye, altså, med investeringer i skib og, og drømmen om forskellige ting. Så. The fishing industry in the 60s and 70s uh, was growing and growing. Then it grew too far, it, it uh, got overheated. Just to put up a, a, a factory is not enough. The one in Nolsoy couldn't get fish enough, so it had to close down. And after the breakdown, half the population of that little village emigrated. Det var så många, det var så många som gick konkurs, alltså som 
Ja, dat het is heel sommige te trap of dat is iets heel dammers. Every strike of a hammer is a strike against the enemy. Is that a Prussian or is it a capitalist? <laughs> or both. Since the, the latest big crash, which was, as say, a result of Atledam, uh, uh, not the result of Atledam, but, but of, of the overheating and, and, and that, a lot of people moved away, and and then in the late 90s there was uh, a strong movement uh, to rebuild the Faroe Islands. A lot of the the politics that were decided in Denmark before are are now decided in the Faroe Islands, and there has been a steady movement towards independence since the late 90s. I lived in, in this small village, uh, just in Nolsoy, on, on the island there, mm -hmm. uh, just around, around that time, and uh, everyone was unemployed there. There was no money going around. A lot of Faroese food was, was eaten yeah. and, and, you know, uh, the fishermen uh, were going out and fishing their own fish and people rarely bought anything else than, than milk and, and bread in the shops. You know, there, there was no shop that you could buy anything else. What helped a lot was the, I mean, there was a new sense of, of nationality. People were mad also of, of the terms that that the banks got from Denmark. Big scandal, we actually, you know, even though Denmark bailed us out, we had to pay almost double mm. back. So, so we were left with uh, both the, the poverty and the bill for it, you know. And people were very mad at that. And, and they started uh, saying, but how can we do it better on our own? How can we build this country to make it viable on its own and not be dependent of, of someone who might screw us over, you know?
we are in the Danish Kingdom. And we are working very good together, of course. But when we are speaking about the, uh, the uh, trade agreements and fishery agreements, we are not a member of EU. Denmark is a member of EU. That means that when we are doing a new fishery agreements, then I am calling Russia directly, and Denmark is going down to Brussels. Compared to Greenland, we are less dependent because we are uh, receiving now 600 million Danish kroner and Greenland is receiving today something like 4,000 million Danish kroners. The biggest difference between Faroe Island and Iceland, uh, I think that is the currency. Iceland had their own currency and uh, we are connected to Danish kroner in value and also to the euro. So that means that we have not have enough a fluctuating uh, currency. And we have also been blessed with the nature resources through all the crisis, with fish, a lot of fish. And uh, our resources around Faroe Island is approximately 500,000 tons of fish. So Faroe Island is a small country, with, but with very big resources. And salmon farming is a big one also. We are exporting a lot of salmon to the United States today. All the sushi restaurants in the United States are having fairy salmon on their table. That's because the, the environment here around the Faroe Island with the Gulf current is the ideal seawater to produce, to farm. Russia market is a growing market for us with good quality salmon and also good quality pelagic fish in the blue whiting, uh, mackerel, herring. Two years ago, I had a very good meeting with uh, Mr. Lauro in New York. And uh, there was, that was the beginning step that uh, we are claiming for a free trade agreement. And we have been uh, very much in the EU markets, in the States. We need to come into the Russian markets stronger because we have something to offer. And of course, our good relations with Russia for all these years, also Russians have been here, all the fishermen, all the fishing vessels who have been in Faroe Island, taking oil and food and so on. So I think we have a very good connection, practical, with Russian people. They have always been welcome here, and we, we feel us certainly much uh, welcome in Russia. In the Faroe Islands, you can say, we, we don't just have left and right, but we have also, you know, union with Denmark and uh, independence. So often you have a mixed government. My party, which is the People's Party, which is an independence party too, we have often worked together with the Republicans on the left side. So you can have a right side uh, party together with the left side party, but their main goal is to get more independence, you know. I think it, it has a lot to, uh, to do with, to be proud to manage on your own. So you're not uh, getting money from other countries. Very often, you know, the separatist movement is is seen as, as uh, uh, cutting ourselves off from the rest of the world, but basically it's, it's cutting us off from only being uh, in relation with Denmark, because almost all trade and travel is through Denmark. Yeah. Um, we're closer neighbours to Scotland. And, and, and we are just as close to London as we are to Copenhagen. There are three flights daily to Copenhagen, and there's one flight weekly only during the summer to London. And, and 
I see London as a bit bigger hub to the world than, than Copenhagen. No. <laughs> Copenhagen is yeah. the center of the universe. <laughs> You know, separatism from, from Denmark doesn't have anything to do with Denmark. It has everything to do with ourselves. And we have, you know, we have the natural resources, we have the people, we have the, the knowledge. And I, I think we can, we can only benefit from it because we're still getting over the post-colonial uh, mentality. Generations before us, we've been taught that, that we need somebody else to make decisions for us. Christianity is much more uh, rooted in the, in, in the Faroes uh, more than in the other Scandinavian countries. So that's why we, uh, we have another abortion law, a law for abortion in the Faroe Islands, more conservative. And also when it came, comes to homosexual, we are more conservative than uh, the other countries around us. I think Faroe Island, we have the one of the high, most highest birth rates in Europe, actually. Uh, 2.4, 2.5. I don't know if it's only about the dark winters and so on, but uh, hopefully we will, uh, we will keep that birth rate on a high level. We have the lowest rate in the world when it's coming to how many people are in jail compared to every 100,000 inhabitants. So we are as I'm usually saying that I'm as a prime minister in Fair Island, I could sleep at night with my doors open. If you are a part of my family in Fair Island and you were good out to get some uh, alcohol drinking and so on, the family will also help that get you on the right track again. So there are very strong family relations structures who are helping that we have a low, ride, uh, low rate of of criminal. There is crime and there are people that are very poor and there are, there are, are struggling in yeah. society everywhere. And, 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 so and it's, it's not that uh, picture yeah. perfect as you... Yeah. No, 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 it's... Uh, and, and, it's and especially, uh, I mean, the, the, the government that has been in power the, the last few years, they are uh, putting uh, laws and, and tax reforms mm -hmm. uh, that are making the, the cliff big, bigger b between uh, mm. poor and rich. You know, we can say a, a bunch of bad stuff about it, but it's a very open and accessible society. Uh, you can drink coffee with the Prime Minister on a normal Thursday without any bodyguards. Um, you know, our kids go to the same school as, as their kids, so it's all about us and how we can develop.
If we fuck up, then it's our problem and not somebody else's. Okay. <laughs>